Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, my name remains Sunday Okafo. I want to quickly share with you an important insight into scholarship application. If you are applying for scholarship, irrespective of the scholarship you are applying for, there are some important things you need to know. And today I'll be sharing with you how you can maximize your strength in any scholarship application. So, your strength is where you have demonstrated and achieved outstanding results in the past. It can also be an aspect where you have maximal potential for success. So when we are talking about your strength in any scholarship application, it can be your academic performance in school while you are in school, it can be your work experience, your research experience. It can come from diverse you know, experiences you have had in the past. It can also be your potentials, what you can do the skills you have acquired in the past. So those are the things I'll be sharing with you today in this video. And I'll be showing you how you can implement them in your applications in order to have a strong application and to stand out among the crowd. Okay, so the first one is your academic grade. When we talk about academic grade, you know, some people might trivialize that oh academic grade is not that important it's you know it's your what you can do your experience and all that but academic grade is important you know stat stats has shows that in the majority of scholarship are won by those that have good academic grade okay so when i mean good academic grade it's relative there are some scholarship that it's mandatory that you have a first class there are some that will say you must have a minimum of second class upper um, you know, there are different scholarship and different requirements. And there are some scholarship that doesn't place any, any threshold or any benchmark when it comes to academic grade. But academic grade is still very much important. All right. So if you are applying for a scholarship and you have a good academic grade, there, there are ways you can leverage on them in your applications. You should know that Having a good academic grade alone is not all you need to get, an, to get a, a scholarship, okay? There are people that have good academic grade, but they don't know how to use it well. Or they, they have overconfidence in their grades and they didn't work on other areas of the application. So, an academic grade can work in your favor and of course, so it can also work against you if you don't use it well. So, if you have a good academic grade, you know, in your application, already you are going to submit your transcript. The, the admission board is going to see your transcript. They will consider it based on what the subject you have done. But another way you can leverage on that is to discuss some core courses you did. You know, maybe, you know, for you to have a good academic grade, you know, CGPA, the first class, two one, strong one. And um, that means you have done well in certain subjects or in certain courses. So if you are writing your SOP, you can highlight some courses related to that program you are applying and how well you have performed in it, the, the knowledge you have gained through taking those courses, you know, that can collaborate and work in your favor. So that's a way you can leverage on your academic grade, okay? So the second one I want to talk about is research experience and publications. Um, if you are applying for some certain scholarships, research experience and publication might not be a major requirement, okay? But there are certain scholarships that when you are applying to, this can work in your favor, all right? So research experience comes from either working, working in a research establishment after your undergrad or even the research you did while you are undergrad, your final year project, you might have gathered some experience or you have worked while you are an, an undergrad you work in labs with some professors you help some professors in carrying out research work those are ways you gather research experience okay so publication of course is a product of a research okay in most cases you might have research experience but you don't have publications that is fine okay you might, you might have worked in some research establishment, carry out some research, but that does not lead to publications. That is fine. You have a research experience, and that is even, in most cases, a very good um, thing to have. Okay, so how do you leverage on your research experience? 
So if you are applying for a research based program, for instance, you are applying to a so uh, let me use uh, chemistry as an example, PhD in chemistry. You know, you are going to work in the lab, of course. You know, you have to carry out a lot of experience, how to use some certain tools, how to carry out some certain research. If you have done these things in the past, it gives you an edge over other applicants. All right. So when you are writing your, maybe your statement of purpose, you highlight these experiences that you had in the past and how that has you know helped you to you know to have come this far okay so you have to highlight those things in your sop you have to highlight the work the tools you have used in your cv you have to put those information there let them know that you have gathered this research experience and that can be a great you know edge for you then if you have publication as a result of your researches, you you have to also put it there in your application. Let them know that you have published social papers because at the end of the day, the essence of research is to pull out the information out there for people to see it, for people to implement it, for, for it to be used, you know, to make the system better. So getting a publication for your research is a, is a way to strengthen your application. So. As I said earlier, there are some scholarship that doesn't require you having research experience or publication experience, okay, or publications. So, for instance, you are applying to scholarships like Shevnin scholarship or the scholarship that are more development oriented. Having all this might give you an edge, but it's not compulsory you have them. But if you are applying for direct PhD program to the US or you know to other part of the world having these skills or this experience can be an edge for you okay so these are another area of your strength you can you can you can leverage on the third one is work experience okay there are people that have been working in the industry for instance you have been working in the industry after school probably have worked in the industry two three four five years or more than that since you left your after your first degree or there about your second degree and now you want to go back to the university, want to go back, want to further your education. And you're now looking at how can I, you know, talk, discuss, how does my work experience benefit this, uh, my application. So now if you are, if you are working in industry, let me say, for instance, you worked uh, in a, in an industry, in a, in a, in a department, in the company, where you work on related, the work you did is related to safety, worker safety, work environment safety, and you are going into a PhD program where you need to uh, implement uh, safety uh, tools, carry out research on, on safety, for instance, construction safety or workplace safety, research based programs like that. Your experience working in the industry becomes very handy all right so if you are writing your application if you can be able to implement those your experience not just having it in your cv which is of course you have to put in those stuff in your cv but if you can highlight how that experience relates to the program that you are about to take in your statement of purpose that can go a long way to give you an edge for instance if you are talking about how you implemented um, safety protocols and the loopholes you found, you know, why you are implementing it and, you know, some, some setbacks in carrying out a proper implementations and how you think carrying out research in this area to find a better solutions to those problems. You know, that's the passion why you are doing this, pro you, are, you are pursuing a PhD in order to carry out further research to understand how safety can be well implemented in the workplace so that is another way you can you can you know put in your experience or you can you can join bring your experience into your application and another instance is for instance maybe you have worked in the health sector you have you are you are you are probably a medical practitioner i've been working in the health sector for a while and you know there is there is a prevalent um 
outbreak or a prevailing disease in an environment and there have not been a proper solutions to that disease and you know due to your passion to find solution to that you are pursuing a graduate study in order to understand how research can help in solving that problem so those are ways you can express your passion express your reason for pursuing a graduate program in your statement of purpose okay so that is another one so the third one or the fourth one now is award and certification award and certification is very important when i talk about award here it can be you know some award you received while you were you were an undergrad or probably some scholarship you have won as an undergrad or you you uh you, you got an award for being a best student or you got an award for something you did in the community you were recognized for that and all that so this these are these are awards okay and certification can come from maybe you took a, a course or you took you learn a skill and you are certified for that skills or you know you learn a software and you are certified for that software all these are different certification that you can get okay these are skills these are important things that you can that can make your application standards i remember there are different scholarships where this can play important role compared to others okay so if you're applying to uh scholarships like um common web based scholarships scholarship that is, is dedicated to development in middle to low income country or you know those this 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 comes in handy right what awards what have you achieved your achievements in the past it can stand out for you in those scholarships okay so you need to highlight them no matter how little it may be it is important that you highlight them properly extensively in your applications okay so the next one is voluntary leadership experience voluntary leadership experience is very important especially for people applying to leadership based scholarships there are tons of leadership based scholarships and they have their requirements most of them will write we ask you to write an essay on voluntary leadership experience what leadership experience have you had in the past probably as an undergrad while you were in school uh, after schools what positions of leadership have you taken before voluntary okay maybe your class rep you were class rep you were you were president of an association or you were a leader of a of a committee or you were a member of a committee and you were you know team leader in certain certain in certain levels it can come in different ways okay so your voluntary leadership experience can be an important ingredient to your application so if you are applying for as i said leadership based pro, um, scholarships like shevnin commonwealth elasmus um, you know that there are a lot of scholarships like that that requires a component of leadership in your application so in that instance it is important that you highlight all your leadership experience no matter how little it might sound as long as it's something that have impacted positively on the life of others and the society in general has added value to people's life it's important that you highlight them and not just mentioning them okay i was the president of this i was the member of this committee you know it is important that you state the values that you add to people's life through that position that is very important because they are going to be looking at okay what did you achieve being a president of this association it's not about you it's not about you being in that position it's more about what you achieve in that position how many people were you impacted how many lives were you able to change positively for being in such a position so that can be an area of strength you can maximize in your application volunteering experience volunteering experience is quite different from voluntary leadership experience volunteering can come in different forms when we talk about volunteering it can come when maybe where, where you volunteer for an organization probably uh to 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 carry out some programs 
volunteer to learn to learn something uh, to work with an organization to execute some programs to the community to sensitize the community on certain things for instance you, you volunteer with an ngo maybe on earth day or maybe on create awareness about climate change create awareness about self education you know gender equality this it can even be an a day volunteering no matter how small it can be an hour or two hour volunteering experience you know these are what you can highlight in your applications you don't have to be uh you don't have to volunteer for a very well known established organization it can even be you gathering people together or forming a group together to carry out um, environmental uh, sensitization or waste proper waste disposal or hygiene it can come in different forms okay so these are volunteering experience and it can be very important when you are applying to scholarships like the ones i mentioned earlier on where volunteering can be an important uh, part of your applications okay now your background story it is your background story is is a unique part of your application okay there are some applications like the commonwealth chevening um scholarships there are tons of other scholarships like that that your story can make you to be selected for the scholarship above every other thing okay how push how passionate is your story what is your background what what is the passion behind you pursuing this program for instance you grew up in a community where where there is um, you know poor hygiene or maybe a member of your family died because of a particular sickness and you have decided that because of that you are going to find a solution to that sickness you're going to make sure that nobody else loses their life because of that sickness and that is your passion for pursuing a program you are about to pursue or you 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 had a lot of challenges growing up you know to 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 get a um you were unable to get um you know go to the university for some time because your parents couldn't afford it you know you come from a very um less privileged background so find something that can res resonate with the uh, the reviewers when they are reading your story for instance you know the application like the commonwealth will ask you to write how you were able to overcome some challenges to higher education okay so for instance i could remember when i was writing my story then i remember the challenges i faced you know how i have to convince my dad you know to sponsor me to university you know what i did how i went about it to make sure that you know i i i i am always on his good side you know even despite all those challenges and the ones i faced while in school you know financial challenges and everything how those were motivation to me to you know to pursue higher education so find something unique about your background and use it to write a story that is compelling when it comes to your scholarship application so that is a way you can leverage on your strength so your background can be your strength your story can be your strength okay now literary skill here when i talk about literary skill is one thing to to have these areas of strength and is another thing to know how to put it in a story form to tell it as a story to bring it together in a way that we interest those that read it okay if you if there are there are, there, are, there are two different people can write about the same thing but when you read it you 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 are you are you know drawn to one than the other okay so if you are able to write your story properly if you have the skill of writing it can help you to put your um, necessary routine part of your essay in a way that can be compelling so literary skill is a good skill to have and is a strength also most people have it most people don't really have it and you don't have to be an orator or you don't have to be a, 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 an author or something for you to have the skills okay 
it's just more about you how knowing how to put your stories together in a way that will draw the attention or that will compel the reviewers to look in the side of to favor your application okay so and when it comes to literary skills it is very important that you start your first paragraph of your essay you know let it be very cashy let it draw let it be compelling don't start it the normal way most people will stand we start an essay you know probably for an sop you just start my name is this i graduated from this no find something astonishing something that will make the person to start re to continue reading okay you know you can you can look out for a story to tell just let your first paragraph be like you telling a story okay what what makes you to to want to pursue this program okay what is the motivation behind you pursuing this program you can start from when my mother was when i was 19 years old um you know just find something that is compelling okay especially in all your essays that that you need to write make sure that you 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 start on a very strong note on a very uh, um compelling note and that can make your application stand out all right so those are the the areas of your strength there might be more of it but these are the few that i i think are very important in your application so we've talked i talked about your academic grades and how you can leverage your needs in your application your research experience work experience award and certification voluntary leadership experience your volunteering experience and your background story and finally i talk about literary skills so this a different area of strength and combination of them proper combination of these areas in your application can give you an edge okay you might not have everything here but if you are applying for a particular scholarship you need to identify which of these areas of strength will make you to stand out in those applications so that's where i'll be stopping and thank you for watching and i wish you success in your scholarship application. Bye-bye for now.